Hey, Jeff, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Thank you so much for doing this. Is it a good day so far for Jeff Richards? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I woke up, you know. <laughs> exactly. And am I getting you from Los Angeles? Yeah. At West cool. Hollywood, yeah. West yeah. Hollywood. Uh, congratulations on launching this podcast. I really like what you're doing because you've always been a great impressionist. People have always known that. But this is your chance to really improv and do the impressions at the same time. Looks like everything started posting October 5th. How long was it in the works for? I thought of this idea like, God, it must have been a year and a half ago. Um, so, you know, but the idea switched. It used to, it was uh, uh, originally... I, I was going to be the guest every time, and then the the guest well, has to explain. Like like a guest, the guest that would normally be a guest would be the host. So, but then I switched that around. So, and then I did a couple. I did the Harland one before the pandemic. Hmm. And you'll see the format was that way, and then I switched it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a couple months ago, and then we started shooting them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Spotify's metadata can make everyone think, oh man, everything launched on October 5th? That's when it started. But <laughs> the key is that it's you being funny, again, in an improv kind of way with a lot of your famous friends and all that. Who was the first person that you taped with? Was it actually Harlan? Yeah, it was. It was Harlan. Um, and yeah, he was a great sport. And you know, the idea of the show is that, you know, I'm never there. You know, uh, so I always get someone to fill in, and that's the impression that I uh, use to uh, interview the the person with uh, the guest. Yeah, so got it. Yeah, uh, if folklore is correct, when you audition for SNL, you have to do three impressions. Was that the case for yours? And what were those three? If it's correct, I did. Uh, I did nine. I think I did around nine impressions. Um, Oh boy, I don't remember all of them, but like some of them are Louis Anderson, David Letterman, uh, Bill O'Reilly. No, not Bill O'Reilly. Um, uh, God, I can't even remember all of Newt them. Newt Gingrich, was that one of them? Or no, not Newt Gingrich. <laughs> uh, Don Imus, maybe, I think. Wow. Yeah. That was supposed to be the first thing I, I ever did on SNL. It was going to be an update with Don Imus, and then uh, Chevy Chase did the shark uh the shark thing. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I got to do a lot of impressions on that show. It was great to see it, you know, see the impressions become, you know, fully realized with, uh, you know, prosthetics and hair and the outfits. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then this is sort of like, this is sort of that for me in a different way. Like, like you said, being able to improv, you know, for 30 minutes as a character, uh, is, is really fun. It's, it keeps you on your toes. You, you try not to break the whole time. You don't want the voice to slip out. Um, and it's, it's so fun. And, you know, the, the guests have been great. So, so it's been great. Where do yeah. your improv, improv roots go back to? Is it when you studied at UNC or is it even otherwise? Yeah, it is UNC. Um, I was in an improv troupe called Chips, Chapel Hill Improvisational Players. I went to UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, yeah, I had a small improv troupe and it was, it was awesome. It was, uh, you know, cause I always wanted to do sketch since I was little, but um, um, I didn't, uh, didn't until then. And then one of, the, one of the guys in the troupe said, hey, I'm gonna go do stand up tonight. And I said, well, stand up, there's a comedy club around here, you know? And he took me there and then I was bit by that bug. And, so should have started doing that. Yeah. The impressions that you just mentioned, Imus is a great, great impression to do. And unfortunately, you know, not everybody, even though he was syndicated and he had his life in Texas, not everybody outside of New York is as aware <laughs> of Imus as, say, Arkansas. Like, I don't think he was syndicated everywhere. Well, well I, don't really give, I don't really give a damn if anybody knows who I am. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I do what I do, stupid idiots. Dumb, stupid, stupid idiots. <laughs> exactly. That's maybe the best Imus impression that I've heard. I can't think of Thank a lot you. of people who do Imus per se. But the fact that you do that and they're, you're wearing right now a Smith's t-shirt shows that you're into 
pop culture, but the, the cooler pop culture. Were you always what they call indie? For music, yeah. I always liked, uh, you know, the Smith, the Cure, the Pesh Mode. Um, but I also played, you know, sports and things like that. So I was a little bit of a jock. Um, but I always did impressions, you know, since I was little, you know, pretty much, you know, impressions kind of start out as, you know, mocking someone, which seems like a negative thing, but it has to start somewhere. Some impulse has to start somewhere to do that person. Something has to strike you to do them. And uh, so it starts off as a mocking thing. So I just used to mock my uncle when I was like three or four years old and, and, and make fun of him. And, uh, and then it just went into like teachers that I'd make fun of and then like students and then then celebrities and yeah I've seen, always had that mm -hmm. seeing the video of you doing say the Robert Downey Jr. bit which I think is ex or wait are you one of those people that goes oh it's it's not me it's my friend blank like you you play up the the well I, I usually don't get into it too much because it's like you know it's like uh, you know sort of weird algorithm that I can't necessarily track down it's like you know it's like Diet Coke or Coke or Seven Up or something you don't necessarily know what it is until you look at it you know the color you know the coloring is like different you know right so it's like a thing exactly <laughs> exactly Sorry. well in in your case when you see it visually it's just very funny and the first time i remember ever seeing that with the lips cut out the the deep fakes what they call it now was late night with conan o'brien yeah I didn't remember anything before that do you no that was i think with with robert smigel used to do a lot of those yeah um yeah, that was sort of the early face swap in a way, right? The lip swap. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if that'd be an insult to hear like, oh, well, that was done a long time ago. Now, granted, you've refined it per se, but I didn't know if Conan was an early influence of yours in comedy. Yeah, he was. Uh, first talk show, first talk show I ever went on too, and um, such a nice guy and I, I always loved the show. He's, you know, different and fun and um, weird and, you know, um, I always liked Conan. So, but I, I didn't really, you know, like, I didn't really get back into impressions until really when that face swap started happening, you know, with, with, uh, I started with, with Snapchat where you just mm -hmm. take a picture, put it on your face. And that just kind of made me go, oh, this is, it's kind of like being on SNL again, you know, being able to look like them, which you can't do usually on your own unless you, you know, you, you just usually don't, you know, you can't accomplish that. So this, there was, and then, then, then deep fake started happening. And then that was sort of like the next level of that. So that's when I got to do Robert Downey Jr. with Collider. And then later I did Robert Downey Jr. deep fake with uh, the Spades, uh, Spades show. Right. Um, lights out. So, right. I mean, that's kind of, people like that because it's, you totally lost in it, but, um, but you do lose yourself. You know, you don't, you don't, you know, at least with, uh, you know, just seeing my face, you see me, you don't get lost. You can get lost in the voice, but uh, you, you don't really, you don't lose the person, you know, it's still like that guy doing uh, something as opposed to maybe you'll even forget it's an impression, you know, that you're just watching the guy and, and that's, that's good for the piece and the, and the thing, but you know, it, the artist gets lost in that a little bit because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't even notice who, you don't know who it is. You don't know anything about them. So, yeah. As yeah. a kid growing up obsessed with stand up, like I was into way older people stand up when, when I shouldn't have been like you're, 12 years old and you know who's on Catskills on Broadway and you're like, oh yeah, it's Louise Duarte and Freddie Roman. And you're like, oh boy, no one else my age knows that kind of stuff. I remember hearing about how Louise Duarte as an impressionist would have to take a long time to come out of the character. In, in your case, can you just turn it off immediately? Yeah, I can turn off immediately pretty much, but then I still have that jet lag thing of, it's, it's like someone was in my body a little bit, you know, coming out of it, especially if I do it for a long period of time. I'm really wiped out too. Cause it's a lot of thinking, you know? Yeah. You know, especially like, get, you know, doing the, this, the, this format, you know, you really have to be able to think like them. Um, 
because you can't just do the questions. You have to be able to, uh, you have to be able to, um, you know, get out of, uh, you know, I, I don't even know what I was talking about. My phone just rang. What was I talking about? You were talking about wh how sometimes you can get out of the impression immediately, but you have kind of adopted the person's thought process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, 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 you try to think like them. And that's why I can't do like, you know, all the different impressions that I can do in this, this podcast format, because I'm just not as versatile and, and some, you know, well, that's yeah. very modest of you to say. And if I can throw you another compliment, because some people don't like getting complimented. Is it okay? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I love the arc of your career in that most people who are on SNL and Mad TV would be using that as the calling card for the rest of their life. And almost like how if you had a hit in the 60s, you know, it'd have your name, parentheses, that's what you did. And then for the rest of your life, you'd come on stage and go, anyone remember the year of 1968? It was a great, you don't do that. You have reinvented yourself so that you're, you mentioned Snapchat before. We're talking about a podcast here. Was that an organic thing where you realized, hey, that was years ago, this is where I am now, or did it just happen that way? I think it just came, it did come with the Snapchat. It like re, reinvigorated me to do impressions. And then the videos, I started doing videos on Instagram with the face swapping and putting those up. And those just, those are just fun for me. And then, I don't know, I was like in my head, I was like, I, I really want to do a podcast because I like the format. It's kind of easy to do for the most part, you know, sure. you set up and, and shoot it and, and you're done. Not a lot of editing. So I, I wanted to do that. But then, you know, and then I started it, like I said, I started right before the pandemic and then, and then the pandemic. So that got put on yeah. hold and then, but yeah. So, but it, it finally happened, you know, pretty excited about it. And it's the main focus for you or is it one of those things of, and there's other things in the works, you'll just have to wait. <laughs> Which one is it? I mean, it's, 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 it's the main thing right at the moment. I mean, there's not a lot going on. I mean, voiceovers, uh, when you can get them and, oh. uh, I mean, stand up is, is pretty much, you know, I've done a couple of zoom stand up shows, but you know, it's not my favorite thing, you know, not super, not super easy to get the timing right with, with the, uh, with the crowd, you know? Yeah, I watched a Zoom stand-up show of Sinbad, and in my opinion, nobody does, material aside, nobody does better crowd work than Sinbad. And when you have to go, so where are you from? And then the person goes, Macon, Georgia. And then it muffles and go, where? Macon, Georgia. Oh, oh, Macon, Georgia. Definitely <laughs> the comedy gets killed right there. But going yeah. back to what you just said about voiceovers, are, are there any commercials or campaigns that we've heard you on that we didn't know was you that you're allowed to say? No, I did just, usually I would do like, you know, um, like I, I did Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I did, oh. um, you know, some little commercials, couple an insurance thing for a little while, um, a, you know, a, a ongoing radio thing. Um, and then, you know, just mostly auditioning a lot, trying to, you know, get more, into that world i'm on the cusp of it a little bit so hmm. um it's it's uh it's pretty hard to penetrate the uh the the voiceover world that's what i'm kind of hoping the the podcast will do kind of you know be able to showcase a little bit it definitely shows your versatility and on aqua teen hunger force i didn't know that you'd done work on that by any chance was any of those uh content that included danzig no no it wasn't no i did <laughs> You know, I did some, uh, I guess you call it ancillary. What is that word? Ancillary characters? Or... Uh, so remember. it wouldn't be Carl. It might be Carl's neighbor. Yeah, something like that. Right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I've always tried to figure this out. Is Danzig the metal equivalent of Marcy? You know, I don't know. I don't know. That's probably pretty close. Probably pretty close. And yeah. I, I just get some Danzig Misfits vibes from you. Even though you said the Smiths and the Cure. Is that safe to assume? Uh, I've seen the Misfits. Yeah, they're fun. Uh, yeah, it, they're good. I like all kinds of different things. Um, my go-to is Morrissey, those Smiths. And, uh, 
and uh, Pet Shop Boys, those things, yeah. Will you go to the Vegas residency of Morrissey at uh, Caesars Palace in 2021? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Exclusive. I got an exclusive right there from, from you. So uh, two quick questions and then you're a free man. And the first question I have is, uh, yes, it hits close to home, but you are a TV film guy and you've been indoors and off the road more than ever this year. Any TV recommendations you could pass along to people needing a new show? Uh, you know, I haven't been watching a lot of that uh, Netflix or anything. Um, I've been pretty much just researching my guests and watching their things. You know, I'm, I'm doing uh, Hannibal Lecter with uh, Brad, Brad Garrett today. And uh, so I've been watching a lot of Sons of the Lambs. So. Uh, with, with you want to hear one of the, you want to hear one of the questions? Please. Yeah, so here it is, guys. Brad Garrett, you're on a show called Everybody Loves Raymond. So, do you, do you love Raymond? How do you love Raymond, Brad? I think you can do it. I think you can do it. I, I've yet to be disappointed by a Jeff Richards impression. I, I would Thank say you. of all the Richardses we got there, we got Keith and we got Michael. You're, you're top three, easily. I do better impressions than Keith Richards, I think. <laughs> I was going to come into this with a question about how all the Richardses except you are using Richards as the fake last name because I thought he was Keith Richard, but it turns out that was just an alias in the 60s. Uh, so very few Richardses that made it. Richardses, yeah. I was going to call the show Jeff Richards's show, but it's just a little too, a little too, a little too much. The apostrophe before and after. after yeah yeah too uh, much well with brad garrett if you're light on material you can ask him about voicing hulk hogan on the 19, uh, 1980s wwf cartoon yeah he did a ton of voiceover work you know you first that? eight years yeah and then you could start a war between him and fred stoller about uh who was better on raymond i was better on raymond come on brad I don't want to, you know. <laughs> Who doesn't love Fred Stoller? I, I, I got to love, love Fred. Uh, my closer, Jeff, any last words for the kids? No, uh, just go check out the podcast, thejeffrichardshow.com, uh, wherever you get podcasts, and uh, check it out. Um, we're going to keep making more of these. Got Phil Hendry coming up. Um, might be a little young for you. No. But, right. uh, you, know, you know Phil Hendry, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to know. And I was talking about cat skills on Broadway, people. I mean, look at who you're talking to. Right, you know, you know that. <laughs> I shouldn't have to explain Fred, uh, uh, Phil, uh, Phil Henry. He's fantastic. Yeah, Absolutely. I did Louis Louis Anderson with him. I, look, you guys ready to play that feud? How you doing, Phil? That's know, that's better than the Anthony Cumia impression, which was just basically show me pudding. Uh, <laughs> well, I think the key is that you're really onto something here and really just keep up the greatness, Jeff. Again, oh, uh, complimenting you. the hell out of you here, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Just keep at it and thank you so much for your time. Okay. Have a good one. You too now. Outro cast.